Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about one of the uh, greatest scientists uh, India has ever produced that is C. V. Raman. This talk is going to give an overview of uh, the life and times of uh, C. V. Raman in the form of a brief history and uh, talk a little bit more about the way he did science and also the interesting aspects of his life. 28th February every year in India we celebrate National Science Day. This we do in order to commemorate the discovery of the Raman effect. An important observation confirming Raman effect was done on 28 February 1928 by Raman and his students and this has had a very important implication uh, in, in physics and uh, various different disciplines of science. Chandrasekhar Venkat Raman, in short form uh, C. V. Raman, went on to win the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1930 for the discovery of the Raman effect. For this particular talk, I have used uh, three sources, essentially three books. One is the uh, pictorial biography on Raman. The other one is uh, a fantastic biography on Raman written by uh, G. Venkat Raman. It's called Journey into Light. And also a popular science book uh, written by the same author, G. Venkat Raman, which is called as the Raman and his effect. So, if you are interested, I would urge you to have a look at these books. They are really excellent uh, references. The pictorial biography has many authors, uh, but mainly driven by Professor Ramaseshan and uh, it has some very, very interesting discussion not only about life and science of Raman, but also some research papers uh, written by C. V. Raman. Now, uh, for this talk, we actually can look at C. V. Raman's life in as uh, five time periods. The first is the childhood, education and undergraduate research dates back from 1888 to 1907. The second period is when uh, C. V. Raman actually becomes an administrator in the Indian Financial Service and also a part-time scientist at the Indian Association of Cultivation of Science which is IACS which was then called Calcutta but uh, now it is called as uh, Kolkata as you probably would be aware. The third period is Raman becomes a polit professor a very reputed position in Calcutta University and also continues to do his uh, uh, research at ISCS. And this period between 1917 to 1933 is the main time when uh, the great discovery happens which I am going to talk a little bit more about. The fourth period is about initially as a director and then as a professor at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, uh, where he also did some very fantastic work and really built some very important networks within the international science community. And the last period uh, is the foundation of the Raman Research Institute where he spent the last 20, 22 years of his life in building and also nurturing uh, science in that particular institute. So I am going to go one by one across these, these five time periods. The first one is the childhood education and the undergraduate research. Raman was born on 7th November 1888, a village near uh, Tirchinapalli in uh, southern part of India. His uh, parents, as you can see, they are the ones uh, who actually were also very encouraging, who gave him a lot of push towards exploring what is interesting in science. His father R. Chandrasekhar Iyer was also his, as a teacher and uh, he encouraged him with a lot of interesting books and his mother uh, uh, Parvati Amal very ably supported uh, Raman's uh, interest in science and various different activities related to this. In 1903, Raman joins Presidency College in Madras, which is now current day Chennai. And he obtains a BA degree with a gold medal in physics and English with flying colors. And he's rated as one of the top students in that particular college, has been already doing research. And interestingly, as early as 1906, Raman publishes his first research paper and that particular research paper happens to be on oblique illumination of light onto a, a particular uh, slit and the diffraction pattern one can obtain from that slit. It is a very neat piece of work and uh, it actually has some very interesting implications and um, there is, uh, th these are the questions Raman was uh, um, basically interested. So you can see his very first research paper was on, on an optics uh, topic which actually continued until until his death and uh, it is a very fascinating aspect of his uh, work. Next, uh, he obtained his Master in Arts in Physics in 1907. 
where he again did very, very well. Interestingly, his teachers actually were telling him to go abroad to England especially and perform uh, uh, research there. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, Raman uh, did not qualify the health checkup which was necessary for him to actually go abroad. And therefore, uh, the plans to go abroad to do uh, further higher studies and research did not actually, uh, uh, did not actually re realize. So therefore, uh, he decided to stay back in India. At that particular point of time, a reputed uh, career was to take up a government job. So what uh, Raman did was uh, uh, write uh, uh, a specific examination and uh, simultaneously also he got married. In fact, in those times, you could see that uh, uh, people got married, especially in India, in, in their uh, late uh, teens uh, and Raman was no exception and he married uh, Lokasundari Amal on 6th May 1907. And in the same year, he also cracked the financial service uh, uh, examination, which is essentially a civil service examination. And uh, he stood first in that particular examination and uh, everything was a cakewalk because he was too brilliant for that particular uh, position. But mind you, at that particular point of time, uh, this was a very lucrative job. At that instance, the government of British India was uh, giving a salary of as high as uh, 1400 rupees. Okay, we are talking about 1907 and that is actually an extremely large amount of money, which also included uh, perks and other kind of support including a, a marriage allowance. <laughs> so, uh, there is a joke uh, by uh, wife uh, of Raman, who was also later called as Lady Raman, who used to tell that uh, Raman married because he could actually get that extra perks. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Raman actually got into this uh, financial civil service and uh, being a married man, now uh, this is how he looked like and uh, he was all set to become an accountant general, an assistant accountant general uh, who will be working in Kolkata. Now, the second phase of Raman's life starts, where he moves to Kolkata in June 1907, where he actually joins this uh, financial civil service. And in the same year, it happens so that uh, during the commute to his work, he always used to see a, a board on, on his way, which was written as Indian Association for Cultivation of Science which has the IACS and uh, he visits that particular uh, location for the first time and he meets uh, Amrit Lal Sarkar who was the son of uh, Mahendra Lal Sarkar who established uh, IACS and he expresses his interest in performing research outside the time of his uh, normal uh, work and Amrit Lal Sarkar and various different people are uh, pleasantly astonished to see that uh, somebody has such a keen interest in pursuing science. So, they right away agree uh, to allow him to do research uh, in the off hours. And uh, Raman did actually have two jobs in that way. One was the Indian financial service job and uh, in, in his uh, other times he used to actually do research. So, that is the commitment of uh, uh, Raman. As he progressed uh, in that particular place, uh, as early as uh, within 8 years or so, the University of Calcutta started assigning scholars to Raman so that they can actually register themselves for PhD. And remember, Raman did not have any PhD. You know? okay. He actually was a master's uh, uh, in, in physics, but his knowledge and his uh, drive and the amount of uh, research he did, even, even uh, uh, handling the financial service work and also doing research, he ended up publishing some very interesting work. In this particular time period, he wrote a lot of interesting papers on acoustics, especially on uh, uh, Indian uh, musical instruments and acoustics of Indian uh, musical instruments. There is a fascinating uh, uh, amount of research what he has done and um, a very, very interesting uh, topic uh, which uh, Raman had kept very keen interest on. Now, important uh, things happened roughly around 1915-16 where uh, Ashutosh Mukherjee who was also one of the kind of founders behind the IACS who was then also the High Court Judge of Calcutta. and. Uh, he also became the Vice Chancellor of Calcutta University. So, Ashutosh Mukherjee always kept a keen eye on uh, C. V. Raman and he always thought that uh, this particular person has huge amount of enthusiasm and interest in, uh, in, in doing research. So, he immediately asked him to join uh, Raja Bazar Science College as which is part of the University of Calcutta so that he gets an association with the university and simultaneously do research in, uh, in, in IACS. And, uh, 1917 was also an important year because 
University of Calcutta actually offered Polit professorship to Raman, so that he actually could pursue research full time. Now, uh, interesting thing is this is, was a tenured position where he could actually stay back up to 60 years of his life, uh, of, his, of his age and uh, importantly, if he, had if he had to take that particular position, he had to also leave the financial service and as I told financial services then was very lucrative job and uh, he had to take a huge pay cut where uh, his salary was as less as 600 rupees or something as a pilot professor which was less than half of what he was earning and uh, nevertheless Raman took the job, he quit the financial service for good and uh, became a full time researcher which is uh, kind of a remarkable story by itself. Now, in the same year, uh, Raman also conceptualized uh, the establishment of Calcutta Physical uh, Society, where uh, he established a kind of uh, uh, association of uh, various different physicists to pursue science and uh, discuss uh, various different topics. Now, the next phase, 1917 to 1963, where uh, Raman now becomes a pallet professor and uh, teaches at Calcutta University and does research at IACS and uh, he does both very efficiently. And in 1919, Amritlal Sarkar who offered the job at IACS unfortunately dies and uh, Raman becomes the honorary professor and secretary of uh, IACS. So, he essentially takes over the IACS in terms of the, the functioning there and uh, he starts the very important chapter of his research uh, life uh, uh, where uh, he starts uh, exploring various different aspects of light scattering. Mainly, he has been motivated now uh, by reading some of the great papers written by uh, Raleigh, Lord Raleigh. And also, I should mention that Raman was deeply influenced by the German researcher Helmholtz. So, he actually really had great uh, admiration towards these uh, classical physicists and he had a very strong foundation in classical physics. And uh, you will see that uh, that foundation uh, not only helped him to connect the classical mechanics to quantum mechanics, but also made him a very good researcher. Now, at the same time around 1921, uh, Raman remember did not have a PhD, but uh, University of Calcutta offered him an honorary uh, DSc degree. Uh, this was again arranged by uh, Sir Rashtosh Mukherjee, whom I just mentioned earlier. And uh, it, uh, it was very important uh, because then it gave him a specific kind of a stature and further uh, it also helped him uh, to embark upon a very important journey abroad and uh, this was uh, for the first time he was going abroad in his life and he visited uh, England where uh, he studied some of the aspects of uh, Raleigh uh, uh, whispering gallery modes uh, at uh, St. Paul Cathedral and he also visited various different researchers. The most important event which happens is uh, on the ship called SS Narakunda, uh, where he is now traveling back from England to India and uh, he has to spend a lot of time on the deck of the sea and uh, a particular question always is, is in his mind and that question is why is the sea blue, okay. The question is very simple. This question is also kind of connected and motivated to the why is the sky blue because Raleigh had already answered this very interesting question and with the phenomenal success because he, has, he, would, he was able to actually explain the blue of the sky. Whereas Raleigh actually had just extrapolated telling that the same principles may also hold good in, in, in water uh, and therefore, the sea is also blue just because of the reflection of water. Raman kind of uh, did not agree on this particular aspect. So, therefore, he still wanted to explore this question in, in greater detail. And he started actually slowly thinking about the problem and uh, by the time he actually reached India, he already had written a, a paper on, on the ship. Okay. He sent this particular paper to nature and the color of the sea, uh, which actually is a very famous paper of C. V. Raman, where he hypothesizes that uh, the kind of scattering which happens uh, due to the molecules in the air can also lead to some very interesting consequences due to the scattering of light from molecules in water, which leads to some interesting uh, colors and other aspects of it. Now, the aspect which uh, is further interesting in this particular time is that uh, he culminates all the knowledge he has gained uh, thinking about this question in an extremely famous uh, essay uh, titled uh, Molecular Diffraction of Light. In fact, uh, 
if you look at it very closely this will also be the title of his uh, Nobel Prize winning lecture uh, later on. But this essay really kind of gave a very nice overview of the kind of problems uh, Raman was interested in and it laid a very good foundation for his students also to explore the phenomena in, uh, in, in uh, great detail. Now, uh, in order to understand the interaction of light with the molecules in, in, in a liquid, his students also started looking at various different uh, processes of interaction of light with molecules of which one of the consistent observations from his student was something called as feeble fluorescence. Now, interesting aspect of feeble fluorescence is that unlike the conventional fluorescence, the feeble fluorescence was polarized in nature. So, according to the, the conventional classical mechanic theory, the light which was scattered and if it were to be fluorescent in nature should not be polarized. Whereas, uh, Krishnan and uh, other students of uh, Raman performed a, an exhaustive amount of experiments as much as 50 to 60 liquids and they consistently observed that no matter how pure, pure, uh, how pure the liquid you are interrogating, they always showed this feeble fluorescence and uh, they also showed uh, polarization which actually was kind of a signature indicating that the process what they were looking at was not a conventional uh, fluorescence process. During the same time around 1925, Kramer and Heisenberg uh, published one of the very important uh, um, theoretical uh, uh, paper on the scattering of light by atoms where they also refer to the uh, work done by Smeckel, where Kramer and Heisenberg actually had mentioned that there can be another kind of scattering which can happen because of some interesting uh, exchange of energy between light and atoms. And uh, mind you, this is still pre-quantum mechanics era, so the quantum mechanical arguments were still kind of coming into, into the uh, forefront and this was one of the uh, hypotheses which was laid by Kramer and Heisenberg with uh, excellent references to Smeckel. And you will see that this is going to become an important reference going further. So, this gave a direction telling that the feeble fluorescence what Raman and his students were looking at was not something conventional fluorescence, but had some kind of quantum nature to that particular interaction. So, therefore, in one shot Raman and his students actually took a catapult uh, kind of uh, from classical uh, observations right to the heart of the quantum mechanics. And uh, within a couple of years, uh, 1927, Compton received a Nobel Prize for uh, studying the scattering of X-rays from electrons, free electrons, which actually showed uh, inelastic scattering of X-rays and already laid a very important foundation, which forms actually kind of a basis for Raman to take the leap of faith in, in uh, proposing the, um, the quantum mechanical interaction between light and matter. So, Dirac's QED is also in the air 1928. So, there is also now the foundation for this particular argument is becoming stronger and stronger. And still Raman and his students are observing this uh, feeble fluorescence. Now, this is the year 1928 is the time where the tremendous discovery happens. The What I am going to now show you is the extract from the diary of K. S. Krishnan where uh, Krishnan actually talks about what happened during those days uh, where this uh, particular excitement was happening. So, he, here he actually mentions that the fluorescence uh, could explain even the outstanding uh, facts because there is no theory of fluorescence which could explain everything uh, what they were observing. And uh, he also mentions that uh, uh, other particular molecules have been studied and uh, one of the important consequences that the light which has been scattered is strongly polarized as you can see it is written here. Now, here is where the connection is made. On February 7, Tuesday, 1928, Raman uh, actually um, kind of comes back to the hostel where uh, Krishnan and another student, uh, Venkateshwaran, uh, after the meals and they are actually chatting uh, in their rooms uh, uh, about 9 o'clock in the uh, at night and Raman comes to the hostel and, uh, and uh, knocks on the, the doors of uh, Krishnan and Venkateshwaran and asks them to, to come down for a discussion. And uh, when they went uh, down, uh, Raman uh, uh, is very excited and, uh, and he keeps telling that, uh, that what they are essentially observing is the Kramer's Heisenberg effect, which I just uh, told you in the uh, couple of slides ago. And uh, what he calls this as the effect uh, as a modified scattering effect and not a conventional fluorescence. So, this is the first time where the modified scattering actually is put forth 
and uh, this is a very important uh, step in uh, going further. So, with this uh, a kind of uh, hypothesis and understanding, um, uh, all his students and Raman further explore and this is the most important uh, event. On fe February 28, Tuesday, uh, Krishnan writes that uh, uh, went to the association only in the afternoon, professor was there and we proceeded to examine the influence of the incident wavelength on phenomena use the usual blue violet filter coupled with uranium glass that is the kind of uh, uh, filters they were using. The range of uh, wavelengths transmitted which is essentially the scattered light by combinations of these uh, transmitted filters alone. On examining the track with different uh, vision spectroscope which is the instrument they were using to visualize this uh, scattered light and uh, they found to their great surprise that the modified scattering was separated from the scattering correspond to the incident light to a dark region which means that they actually had were seeing this as a very, very clear scattering signature which was an elastic scattering process. This particular event is now considered as the day of the discovery of Raman scattering and this is the reason uh, why India celebrates the science day uh, because this important discovery was made on Feb February 28th, Tuesday and uh, 1928 and uh, this is a kind of remarkable day and therefore, uh, we do commemorate this as the as an important day in the history of Indian science. And uh, Raman uh, was enthusiastic, you could see uh, this very beautiful picture of Raman with his spectrometer and this instrument is still preserved till date at IACS Kolkata and uh, towards the right side you will also see the first ever Raman spectra photographed uh, using that kind of an instrument. And uh, this is the famous nature paper which forms the basis on which even the Nobel Prize is awarded. And you can see that they are also making uh, a comparison with the uh, Compton effect and also call this particular uh, new radiation as a modified scattering uh, from the case of ordinary light. Two types of uh, scattering also occurs um, and um, they distinguish this particular scattering and you can clearly see Raman and Krishna are the authors of this paper and the address is in uh, the famous Bau Bazar street at Kolkata. Now, uh, this is a one of the earliest spectra recorded uh, by Raman and his students, the Raman spectra of uh, carbon tetrachloride and it is a beautiful uh, uh, spectroscopic signature of that particular thing. And uh, later on uh, between 1917 to 1933 furthermore, he continued to do this effect. So, discovery happened on 28, uh, 1928. Raman actually was extremely well networked. So, immediately he called a press conference with the Associate Press of India, released the news and they published that particular news right away on the next day because this was confirming and mind you he has already sent the paper in, in early February. So, he was doing all the things in the right direction. And the 1928, 16th March, he gave a detailed lecture in Bangalore uh, to the South India Science Association where he gave all the evidence for the, this particular effect. Here he gave and this particular lecture was also published in the Indian Journal of Physics. And uh, 31st March as I mentioned uh, the nature article are, uh, appears uh, which actually establishes this effect uh, with significant kind of uh, um, uh, effect. Uh, the whole world actually takes uh, notice of this particular uh, uh, important discovery. 1928 I should mention in the July issue two Russians. Uh, Landsberg and uh, Melistam also report independently the Raman scattering effect, okay, but they actually observed this in a solid state. Nevertheless, uh, they also were in contention for the Nobel Prize, but uh, for some specific reason they did not actually end up getting the Nobel Prize. So, Raman actually got the complete credit of this particular discovery, but uh, there was also some French researchers who also were working on that particular area and uh, they also had observed similar effect and within a few uh, months uh, various different researchers could uh, could repeat Raman's experiment and it was confirmed. So, 1929 Peter Prigeshman in Germany coined the term Raman effect and lined as Raman effects. This is the first time when Raman effect was explicitly mentioned in, in, in the literature uh, the, with the coinage terms uh, co with the uh, terms coin, uh, coined to that particular effect. And 1929, uh, Rutherford, who was one of the most influential uh, physicists in the world then, made a reference in his pre presidential address of Royal Society to the effect what Raman had, uh, had observed. And uh, within an year, Raman get, got the Nobel Prize in physics 
Raman actually was anticipating. He had booked his uh, tickets to <laughs> his, his Stockholm much earlier uh, to the date of the announcement. Uh, so much was his confidence uh, that uh, he, he wanted to actually uh, emulate that and then go there. And in the same year, uh, he also was uh, uh, knighted. And um, interesting event happens after the Nobel Prize around 1932 and 33. Raman falls out of uh, a goodwill of various different people in Kolkata. He actually has a lot of differences of opinion with the people. And uh, unfortunately, he gets sacked from IACS, from the honorary secretary position. Uh, so he is very disappointed now. And simultaneously, there will be an announcement for uh, the directorship of uh, Indian uh, uh, Institute of Science in Bangalore. And uh, when people are scouting for a new director in, in British India, Rutherford actually gets to know about this. And Rutherford tells, uh, why should you have somebody else other than Raman himself, who is already available there? So they offer the position, Raman takes it, and Raman becomes the fourth director of uh, Indian Institute of Science. And uh, these are some of the photographs uh, of uh, the Nobel Prize uh, ceremony. You can see to the left, uh, Raman is receiving the Nobel Prize from the uh, King of Sweden. And uh, Loko Sindri Amal, uh, the wife of Raman, and Raman actually are in the photograph. And there's also a photograph of uh, Lady Raman also interacting with uh, the dignitaries in, in the uh, banquet ceremony. So 1933 to 1948, uh, Raman stays as a professor at Indian Institute of Science. Uh, here he becomes the director uh, at IAC. He's the fourth director and the first Indian to become a director of IAC. And uh, Max Bonn, the famous Max Bonn, uh, visits uh, IAC between October to March 1934. There's a long story, very interesting interaction between Raman and uh, Max Bonn. And uh, there's also very interesting argument uh, on uh, crystal dynamics which uh, Max Vaughan and uh, uh, Raman had, had different opinions on that particular uh, uh, theory, where Max Vaughan's theory uh, ended uh, as the winner because that turned out to be uh, uh, accurate compared to the Raman. So, Indian Academy of Science was established in 1934 um, during the period of uh, Raman. Raman took the initiative for that. But unfortunately, again, because of various different controversies, Raman had to resign as the director of IISC but he still kept the position of a professor in that same place. And Homi Baba came to India around 1939 and there are very interesting interactions uh, between Baba and also IASC and other particular uh, dignitaries. Now, uh, Raman was not only a very enthusiastic uh, researcher, in order to raise funds, he also actually uh, you know, established uh, industries. So, Travancore Chemical and Manufacturing Industry, which he helped establish uh, with uh, one of his students, P. Krishnamurti. And uh, he actually did uh, uh, raise some money for some specific uh, uh, research funds and things like that. He also became in 1947 first uh, national professor uh, by the government of India. And uh, he, this is a time period where he also was studying the crystal dynamics, which is a very interesting area and he had some very interesting ideas. And uh, uh, with Max Bonn also, he had a very long argument regarding this and it is part of uh, history in physics. Now, 1948, he retires from ISC, he completes his uh, position. And then, uh, these are some of the interesting photographs. You can see he's spending time uh, and having nice uh, kind of laughter with uh, greats like Heisenberg. And also, he here uh, towards the right side, he is talking to Dirac. Uh, Heisenberg, Dirac, all these people played a very important role in establishing uh, a Raman effect on a very strong footing because the, the, their theories actually helped them uh, uh, to, to, uh, for, for Raman to go ahead and uh, hypothesize further all the effects what he was observing. He is also now uh, uh, photographed with uh, Wolfgang Pauli uh, and uh, Yukawa and these are all photographs probably taken at Lindau. Uh, meeting, which is the meeting of the Nobel laureates, and uh, there are some very fascinating uh, photographs. Here you'll also see he uh, is uh, photographed with uh, Max Bonn, and also uh, uh, Mirza Ismail is also towards uh, his uh, right. And the other photo, what you see towards the right side, is the Milikan uh, and uh, Raman in the same photograph. Milikan, uh, uh, as you probably would be knowing from oil drop experiment. 
was also a very famous uh, physicist. Raman actually would have visited Millikan in Caltech in 1920s and uh, Millikan actually kind of uh, comes back to Bangalore and he makes a visit to Raman. So the last phase of uh, Raman uh, is in the Raman Research Institute. In 1948, Raman uh, found, uh, lays the foundation for the Raman Research Institute. He also gets the Bharata Ratna in 1954 along with uh, Rajagopalachari and uh, Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan. And uh, in 1960s, he works extensively on color of flowers, human vision. He was a person who was mainly driven by aesthetics and connect connecting those aesthetics to to physical phenomena and he does some very fascinating work. Even when he was at IS, he does some very interesting work on Raman Nath effect and other things, but I have not uh, kind of talked on that in detail. So Raman actually was a very keen experimentalist. He also was very enthusiastic in, in showing his work to others. He always encouraged questions and had very nice interactions. And he also was an excellent lecturer and a, a narrator and a speaker. And uh, here uh, towards the left, you are seeing uh, him giving a talk on crystal dynamics. You can uh, probably see the uh, dispersion relationship uh, also drawn on the board. And towards the right side, he's giving a talk. The most important thing about Raman is that he enjoyed interacting with children. He was a very big hit with, uh, with small children. In fact, he was an excellent uh, communicator of science. He really it seems enjoyed extensively interacting with children, really aroused their interest. There are so many of the people from that uh, generation of uh, children whom you see here have told that they got really inspired to do science because of the interaction with Raman. So this is something which is, uh, which is very good and very important as part of uh, being a scientist. Finally, 1970s, he's already about 82. Unfortunately, he had a cardiac arrest in his lab and uh, he falls ill. He recovers a little bit, but on, uh, on 21st of November 1970, unfortunately, uh, C.V. Raman uh, passes away peacefully without any specific uh, element, but uh, he kind of uh, uh, a person who has created history and suddenly one day he is no more. So that was actually a big loss for the Indian research community. This is the last photograph of Raman taken probably in, uh, on the day of uh, October 2nd, Gandhi Jayanti in 1970 if I am correct. So what I have now talked about is just a brief history of a, a great man uh, who dedicated his life to science and uh, his journey through this whole era from being a, a, an undergraduate very interested in science all the way to making an important discovery and eventually winning a Nobel Prize and also establishing a center of excellences uh, at a few places. Raman left his footprint at every place wherever he actually uh, walked. He also made a very important contribution to science and uh, I will end with the words of C.V. Raman, what India needs is science and more science. Thank you. <laughs>